from the historic Murphy Center on the Middle Tennessee campus. It's the Blue Cross Basketball Championships. Division I Class AA matchup today has the O'Brien County Central Lady Rebels taking on the Christ Presbyterian Academy Lady Lions. Hello everybody, Chip Walters along with Kyle Turnham today as we get set for this double-A title game. 112 schools started the year, we're down to two. Absolutely right, Chip. This is what everybody lifts for, it's what everybody practices for, and it's going to pay off for one of these teams today. For O'Brien County, they come out of West Tennessee, it's high flying and free wheeling down there, and Brandy Goodman on the inside averaging a double-double during the state tournament. 19 points, 15 rebounds per game, Chip. She's coming into this game averaging 23 and a half and 12 and a half in the state tournament. She's not alone with Jennings, Wiggins, McEwen, and Wright alongside her as we check the O'Brien County starting lineup and throw it over now to Jonathan Hutton, who's standing by with Coach Lyle LaRue. Coach, you're taking on CPA today. What did you give the keys to the game for your team? Well, we said rebounding is the number one on both sides of the floor. Go get some extra balls so we can get some extra shots. But we got a defensive rebound. That's we've that's been our one little weakness. This these two games up here in Murfreesboro. So that's a, we said that was number one. Number two is make sure we keep them in front and don't let them penetrate. And that kind of goes back into the rebounding because if you let somebody penetrate, then you have to help and that breaks down your rebound. Those two things started with the keys of the game. All right, Try good luck to today. Keep it like X's and O's and not not about the mental aspect because. They're already nervous, so we try to keep it calm and collected. Enjoy it. Thank you. Chip? For Christ Presbyterian, Kyle, it's a family affair, and we start with their key player, and that's going to be Faith Legate. She has kind of led this team to what is now 23 consecutive wins. That's exactly right, Chip. She's the daughter of Becky Legate and also her dad over there on the sideline as well. She plays the low post, but don't forget about Lauren Thompson, who plays the high post. They, pull, they form the perfect high-low tandem. They have Brooke Jennings, Shannon Wiggins, Alan McEwen, Macy Wright in there for O'Brien, but we've got the Charpentier sisters in there for CPA as well. Jonathan is now standing by with head coach Becky Legay. Coach, your team came into the tournament winning 21 straight games. What did you tell your team in the locker room prior to tip? We know actually coming into this game, even though we had won 21 games, um, we weren't ranked in any polls. We really weren't given any credit at, at any point. And so I just told them to do what we did to get here, to keep fighting hard. My team is very feisty and they are hard workers and they're not going to back down. And I told them that's the that's essentially the character that we need to have today in order to get the win. Good luck today. Thank you very much. Chip, back to you. Kyle, one of these two teams is going to win a first state championship. Keys to the game for O'Brien. For O'Brien, they're going to have to handle CPA's pressure because CPA does a great job in their 2-2-1 press, but also in their half-court defense. And they're going to have to shoot the ball well from the perimeter to allow Goodman to play one-on-one -on -one in the post. For CPA, how are you going to stop Brandy Goodman? Are you going to double down? Are you going to play zone? What are you going to do to stop her? And you're going to have to create empty possessions for O'Brien with your defense. Well, it looks like the entire town of Troy, Tennessee is here today. Glad you're with us from Mountain City to Memphis on the TSSAA Network. Double-A title game comes up next. The 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championships are brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, proud corporate sponsor of the TSSAA, and by the Governor's Highway Safety Office, who reminds you don't drink and drive and by your local Tennessee public television station proud host of the 2012 Blue Cross Basketball Championship I see history I see numbers I see music I see spaceships I see a butterfly each year the school advocates for vision and education in Memphis makes it possible for hundreds of school children to get the glasses they need all for free I see my future. So whatever they see, they see better. That's why Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee supports them. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. I see you. See how Blue Cross is impacting your community at bcbst.com forward slash impact. Take me home tonight. You can choose the back seat or 
We'll choose one for you. There are many reasons why 96% of First Tennessee customers would recommend us. Here are a few. Well, what I love about First Tennessee is that everybody knows me when I walk through the door. They actually get excited when they see you walk into the branch, and I love that. They can't stop me from singing the praises of, of my bank. Would I go anywhere else? Absolutely not. I'm a 96. I'm a 96. I'm a 96. Are you a 96? Come see why 96% of our customers would recommend us. For CPA, at guard number four, Meredith Roman. For O'Brien County Central, in the backcourt, number 11, Shannon Wigan. And forward for the Lady Lions, number 15, Kenzie Charpentier. At forward for the Lady Rebels, number 13, Allie McEwen. At guard for CPA, 22, Mallory Charpentier. At guard for the Lady Rebels, 31, Macy Wright. At forward for the Lady Lions, 23, Faithful. Officials today also making big for them to make the state tournament field and to be selected for a state title game. Jason Hambrick, George Hall, and Shanae Wallace. So, congratulations to that crew of officials as well. Absolutely. They have to compete to get here just like these teams do. So, that's clearly a feather in their cap. First state title game for both of these teams, Kyle. And what about jitters when you get to this point? Well, they should be nervous. If they're not nervous, you would think something would be wrong. What you've got to get your team to focus on is the game of basketball, not the ramifications of this particular game. CPA wearing white today. O'Brien County Central High School in their red and blue. A lot of folks across the state, when you say O'Brien County, the first two words that come to your mind were Cannon Whitby. Yes. Because he, he certainly electrified the state of Tennessee on the boys' side oh, back about 20 years ago before he headed off to the University of Arkansas. We're set to go for this AA Girls State Championship game, the Blue Cross Basketball Championships. O'Brien County gets the tip and immediately goes to the basket. Wright misses, and CPA gets the first rebound. And boy, Wright knew exactly where she was going with it. Straight to the rim. First possession for CPA. Finds O'Brien County starting out defensively. 2-3 zone, Chipper. Working it inside. Faith with gate shot blocked out of bounds. As we work it inside. In line out of bounds plays. Becky Legate sees her team here in the state tournament for the third time. But in the first time in the state championship game. And Charpentier over to the right side. It's uh, Mallory Charpentier. Her three is missed, but an offensive board gives the Lady Lions a second toss. An offensive rebound's obviously a way to get extra possessions. One of the things that CPA does very well. Mackenzie Charpentier wears number 15. Mallory wears 22. But here's Roman. Her shot no good. And a battle for the rebound goes for a jump ball. And CPA will keep possession. Second offensive rebound already. And that's one of the things that Lauren Thompson brings to the table. Yesterday when Legate was in foul trouble, she responded with a 12.8 rebound game. Lyle LaRue talked about defensive rebounding being a trouble spot for his team. It's showing its head early. Absolutely. CPA with it. Mackenzie Charpentier. Back outside as they work it around the horn. Thompson with it. Now they go baseline. Faith Legate, jump shot no good. And O'Brien County gets the rebound. Down the floor. O'Brien works it. 
White again. Her shot no good. She's taking both O'Brien shots. CPA getting the rebound as they are now 0 for 4 from the floor is CPA. They'll turn it over and give it back to O'Brien County. Charpentier trying to drive and create there. Had an opportunity. Probably should have gone with the bounce pass in that particular situation. First turnover of the game for CPA. O'Brien gets it into front court. Brooke Jennings. Works it into the corner. There's McEwen. They get it inside to Goodman. And the shot missed there. Rebound pulled away and knocked down. Jump ball. This time goes to O'Brien. If you could see when the ball went inside to Goodman, she was being guarded by Legate. Thompson was on her way to post double. So the CPA basically showing their hand there. That's how they're going to have to deal with Miss Goodman. Right inside again. Gets it to fall. Macy Wright not afraid to take it inside against bigger players. Absolutely not. She comes into this game averaging 15 points on the year. She's averaged 15 and a half in the tournament. Roman gets it into front court. Works around a screen in the 2-3 zone by O'Brien County. Into the corner. Charpentier, a three is missed. Rebound offensively goes to Thompson. They'll kick it back outside. Another three. This rebound loose on the floor and out of bounds. Last touch by CPA. O'Brien County will get it. Coach LaRue, I'm sure, is very concerned. He's seeing nothing but offensive rebounds taking place at this point. That's something they're going to have to stop. They cannot give CPA extra possessions. CPA now 0 for 6 from the floor. O'Brien quickly the other way. A 3 in the air. Good by Shannon Wiggins. Excellent job of handling the 2-2-1, which is something, again, O'Brien's going to have to do well. CPA gets it inside but misses, but gets the rebound again. Faith Legate comes up with it. Two on the same play. Back out on top, Mallory Charpentier. Works it to her sister McKenzie on the right side. Back to Mallory. On top, they look to solve the zone, and CPA looking for their first basket of the game. There's Charpentier, her shot no good, and the rebound pulled away by Paige Hicks, who is the first off the bench in every game so far for O'Brien here in the state tournament. Ball picked away, and it's Charpentier who gets the steal. And a foul on Hicks out of frustration. Absolutely, and that's one of the things that you don't want to do is pick up needless fouls. Hicks has done a great job for this team coming off the bench. She has spearheaded a number of comebacks and a number of runs in this tournament. First foul on either team in the first four possessions. CPA is 0 for 9 from the field and really have not really attacked the basket all that much. And the concern is the 9 because that's extra possessions off of offensive rebounds. Legate to Charpentier. They work it back inside to Thompson. Inside out pass. The shot no good and O'Brien gets the rebound. That zone is paying dividends right now because they are forcing CPA to take perimeter shots. Macy Wright into front court. They get it in the lane, and a foul called as Goodman made her first move to the basket. The foul will be on Lauren Thompson, her first, and the first on the team. Brandy Goodman, as we mentioned, averaging a double-double so far in the first two games of the state tournament. Chip, she's an excellent back-to-the-basket player. She has a number of post moves. It's very difficult to get a feel for how she's going to get the shot off. You also have to defend her outside of the three-point line because she can go out and knock that shot down. Goodman, one out of two at the line, and it's 6 nothing. O'Brien County. There's Charpentier. They work it inside to the gate. Turns, has her shot blocked by Goodman, but gets the rebound, and then it's stolen away by Macy Wright. Right on the run, goes all the way to the basket. Had her shot blocked and a foul called on Mallory Charpentier. Got her across the wrist as she went to the basket. Her first team second foul. And it will send Macy Wright to the free throw line. Wright's going to have the ball in her hands a lot. You can see that she's reading the gap here. And when nobody stops her, levels her off, she's going to take the ball hard to the rim. First free throw is missed. Substitution for O'Brien as they bring Brooke Jennings back into the lineup. And a 30-second timeout called by 
CPA, and they're just trying to get their feet under them right now. Absolutely. She's going to talk about settling down and talk about being more patient against that matchup zone that O'Brien is running right now. Every time. Talk about staying into the high-low and trying to get the ball chip into that Sunbelt logo. Try to get it to the mid-post. If you work against the zone, that, that that's where the meat on the bone is. I don't think there's any question. You play offense from that spot, you can play high-low from there. You can play inside out, but you can't just settle on shots. 6-0 is the score as O'Brien County Central has gotten off to a good start here this afternoon at Murphy Center. And again, we mentioned to those of you watching on public television stations all across the state of Tennessee, we are glad to have you as those of you around the country on ESPN3. Free throw good by Macy Wright. She has three points now, and it is 7-0. And let's see if CPA makes any adjustments offensively here. The Charpentier sisters play catch. Into the corner, they go to Legate. Back out to Charpentier. Got a screen, shoots from the left elbow. Rebound put back up, no good. Legate with the rebound. Look at a third try at it. Legate's jump shot, no good. Finally, Thompson gets one to fall. Well, again, anytime you give up that many extra shots, those shots are going to ultimately start going down. Here comes that 2 2 1 press, paying dividends. All the way in, the shot missed, but another offensive board, and Thompson puts it in. Seven to four, and the complexion, just by those two plays, has really changed the game. You're absolutely right. The 2-2-1, the bread and butter of CPA. Three in the air is missed. Rebound chased down by Hicks, says CPA in their zone. Here's Goodman. They double her, but makes a nice move to the basket. Just didn't get it to fall. She felt the pressure from her right, went to her left. She's got a great feel for the game when she catches the ball there. Mallory Charpentier drive to the basket. That's going to be a charge and her second foul. And it will send CPA to the bench, and Emily Boyd will check in. Boyd has played in both of the first two games for CPA, scoring six in the quarterfinals against Manassas and four in their win over Livingston Academy. Well, it'll be interesting to see how this affects CPA because Mallory Charpentier is their point guard. She's got an assist-to-turnover ratio of 2.5, which is excellent for a point guard. They need to be able to handle this with her on the bench. O'Brien County brings it in, and again, the 2-2-1 zone press. Best way to break it is never put it on the ground. Here's Hicks. Now they put it inside. Triple teamed as Goodman and couldn't get it to fall. Rebound knocked away and out of bounds. But it will remain in possession of O'Brien County as Macy Wright will check back in for the Lady Rebels. One of the advantages, obviously, that CPA has is they have two post player. They can guard her with either Thompson or with Legate. And you've seen them switch off already at this point. It also makes their post double a little more effective. Off the inbounds, three-point shot is up and good. And it's McEwen who scores on the three. And it's 10 to four, back to a six-point lead. As we talked about, that perimeter shooting is going to be a big key because if they can knock down those shots, that forces CPA to make a decision on how they're going to guard Goodman. Thompson with a putback, misses there, and the rebound chased down, tipped out, and CPA will keep it. Another three teed up. Air ball, and Goodman pulls down the board. They have been 0 for 6 from 3. On the other end, O'Brien County 2 for 3 here in the early going as we're 90 seconds away from the end of the first quarter. 10 to 4, 6-point lead for O'Brien County. Goodman, turn around and foul on Thompson. Per second. And CPA's depth in the post as you see right there, may come into play more on the defensive end than on the offensive end. That's exactly right. It's going to be tested now. It will be interesting to see if CPA leaves Thompson on the floor having two fouls. Goodman with a free throw. It's good. CPA will take Thompson out and will bring in Samuel Fonte. Missed the second. Ball knocked out of bounds, and it will go to CPA. 11 to 4. 
seven point lead. Second time that O'Brien has enjoyed that. El Fonte, oh, three is up and good. Instant offense off the bench. That's a way to contribute coming off the bench. CPA pulling within four, but a foul again as Goodman goes to the basket. That foul's going to be on the gate. At this point in the game, Goodman has had her way. She has gotten to the free throw line multiple times. 15 foul. Only one so far on O'Brien County. And Goodman sticks the free throw. You can see that she favors that left shoulder. Something that when you're going to post double, you're going to have to play to that shoulder because the post double is going to have to come from the top side down. Well, so far, Goodman has not scored from the floor, but her four points from the line have given O'Brien the advantage so far. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. And the numbers that she's really winning are the foul numbers. She's got three on CPA's two post players. With Roman. Over to Alfonte. And down the lane, shot missed. Rebound pulled away by O'Brien County. And the red clad Rebels into the front court. They'll go for one shot here probably as they hold the lead in under 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Macy Wright will stand out and make the defense come to her. Alfonte comes out, forces a little action down to 10 seconds to go. There's Hicks into Goodman. Elbow. Her jump shot is good. 15 to 7, and that will end the first quarter of play. And court shot nearly went. We had one go here yesterday, by yes, the way. Yes, we did. 50 footer. 15 to 7 is your score after one quarter of play. O'Brien County has had the lead and the advantage here in the first eight minutes. Stay tuned for the second quarter. After this, the Blue Cross Basketball Championships from the Glass House in Murfreesboro. Hi, I'm Becky McGurra, CEO of WCTE, the Upper Cumberland's PBS station, and serving all of Middle Tennessee. We're thrilled to be part of a statewide network with all six PBS stations right here in your state. And you know, being a public television station means that we serve the public, you. We serve you with great programming from PBS, like Masterpiece Theater's Downton Abbey, or Antiques Roadshow, or so many other great programs that you've come to appreciate and respect and enjoy. But we also bring you the best from right here in Tennessee, on the Tennessee Channel. Programs from all across our state that reflect our communities. And right now, we're bringing you the best of championship basketball with TSSAA High School Championship Sports. So we hope that you will stay with us for many, many years, and even more importantly, that you'll support your PBS station by becoming a member. Thanks for watching, and we certainly appreciate having you as a viewer. What makes our state unique? Find out on the new Tennessee Channel, a statewide initiative by your public television stations. Each program is created in Tennessee, about Tennessee, and broadcast in Tennessee. How do you build your community's trust? You start with honesty, integrity, and passion. You offer intelligent, thought-provoking programming. You open a window to the world, taking people places they might otherwise never see. You put children first because they are our future. You inspire viewers to get involved and make a difference. You provide award-winning productions telling the stories that make our community unique. We are WTCI, and we're your PBS station. Good. Kendall Poole is the director of the Governor's Highway Safety Office, and Kendall, once again, involved in partnering with the TSSAA this year. Jonathan, it's always our pleasure to be a sponsor of TSSAA Championship Events. I can't think of a better partnership statewide that we have, and we have so many great ones, 
but the TSSAA hits the communities that we need to hit, the student athletes that we need to hit with the booze it and lose it message, the click it or ticket message, and distracted driving are all critical, critical elements of our sponsorship. What's the message you're pushing at this time of year? Obviously, this time of the year, we're looking to save lives. The springtime, a lot more people on the road, so we want to make sure that everybody drives safely and continue to reduce the fatalities in Tennessee. Thanks for the work, and thanks for partnering with High School Athletics. Great. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Guys, back to you. Well, you think about all the folks who come to Murfreesboro across the state and how many folks came up I-40 from Troy, Tennessee today. We hope they click it and tick it on the way back. Absolutely right. Second quarter of the way, and it's an eight-point lead for O'Brien County. CPA with a basketball trying to solve the O'Brien zone. The three-point shot by Elefante is no good, and Goodman gets another rebound. And on the run comes Macy Wright. And to have a fearless point guard at this point of the season, Kyle, can really pay dividends for you. I like the word fearless. You have to have someone there who's not afraid to make decisions, not afraid to make plays. Make the three. Nice move inside and a shot off the glass. Wiggins gets her second field goal, and she can put a key in this game because she's able to get somebody off their feet, make a move to the basket. Excellent read there. Shot fake. Just blew by him all the way to the basket. There's a steal, and again, it's Macy Wright. Nice pass out to Wiggins. Couldn't handle it, though. And out of bounds, but the thought and the good decision was there. Right. The only thing that was lacking was the execution, but you got to like that, Chip. Look at those numbers. Field goals, 3 of 23 for CPA. Obviously a very slow start, but the 17 rebounds is a great concern, and you see O'Brien knocking down shots. That really helps Goodman inside. Yeah, good news, bad news there. You're getting, Absolutely. You're getting the shots. Bad news, you're not getting the ball. You can't have an expectation that when you get that many shots that they're going to continue to shoot that low of a percentage. Legate gets it back outside. The three in the air is good. And with the three, it's Mallory Charpentier. Second three of the day for CPA. Nice inside out by Legate there. She caught the ball and threw the diagonal. Here's Wright over to the corner. McEwen's shot is no good. Rebound pulled away by Wright. She stepped on the baseline, and the turnover will give it back to the CPA Lady Lions. Well, as we talked about in pregame, CPA is going to have to create offense from their defense. Unfortunately, when you're not scoring, you can't get into your 2-2-1. Fourth turnover for O'Brien County, and CPA with the ball. Your boys are here next week. Skip pass over to the corner. Mackenzie Charpentier back to her sister Mallory. Now Elefante as they work around the perimeter of the zone. They hit Legate inside. Her shot wouldn't go, but an offensive board by Charpentier. Sticks it up no good, but she'll be at the free throw line. And good work on the offensive board by Charpentier. As we'll check the foul on 33, Brandy Goodman. You can see the Charpentier inside. just did a great job of getting the offensive board and then getting into Goodman inside to create the foul. McKenzie Charpentier. Free throw is no good. And for the Lady Rebels, Brooke Jennings, a 5'6 junior guard who has three points in each of their first two state tournament games. CPA needs to continue to try to attack inside. Number one, that's where their strength is. Number two, it makes that offense better. Number three, they've got to challenge Goodman and perhaps get her on the bench in foul trouble. Rebound chase down off the missed free throw. Jennings with it, guarded by Elefante. Now they get it to Paige Hicks. Starting to apply a little more pressure out front. Working to the corner. Back to Hicks on top. And against the 2-3 zone in the middle, Goodman kicks it back outside. They'll feed the big girl inside again, and Goodman makes a move, missed the shot, and the rebound. It's Goodman who gets on the floor to pick it up. Still loose. CPA will now have it, but a jump ball will go to O'Brien County. That was a scramble. Think this game doesn't mean anything? Everybody's. Everybody needs their knee pads today. Get those 50-50 balls. 50-50 balls. It's critical. CPA will zone the inbound. Tried to get a quick hitter there. Right shot would not go. And Goodman loses it out of bounds. She and Legate got tangled up and hit the floor. 
but both going for the loose ball. But it was last touched, as you'll see, by Goodman. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to call a foul when they're both basically intertwined like that. A little basketball version of the Tennessee Waltz. Absolutely. Charpentier's three comes up short, rebound by Elefante, and out of bounds. Elefante did a smart thing there. She was going out of bounds and tried to throw it back in to her teammate, just had a tough angle with which to throw from. Elefante's given them a little boost off the bench. She really has. She's been a tremendous lift. Here's Hicks. Works in and uses Goodman this time as a screener. Shot missed in the rebound. Thompson fighting for it, but there'll be another jump right, ball. This right, one will right, go to CPA. TSSAanetwork.com is the place for all the best in regular season and championship high school sports action in Tennessee. Log on to watch all the Division I and II girls and boys tournament basketball games in their entirety. That's TSSAanetwork.com. Chip Walters and Kyle Turnham with you from the historic Murphy Center on the MTSU campus in the geographic center of this great state. CPA with the basketball, they trail by 10. And Goodman gets a big block and the rebound. She says this is her part of the territory. <laughs> Don't invade. Right. Points it over to Jennings. Now into the corner. Into Goodman. Goodman, nice wheel to the basket, and Thompson is going to pick up foul number three. That's exactly right. A little bit of a gamble when you're CPA to have her on the floor with two fouls, and that gamble did not pay off because she has now picked up her third. And she has half of CPA's 16 fouls, and Goodman at the line hits the free throw. She is going to get opportunities at the free throw line, and to her credit, she is a good free throw shooter. Yeah, she's got a great face-up game. You know, typically you don't see post players have the ability to step out and knock down that shot. As I said, she's made a 15-foot jumper in this game and also can make the three. She has eight points in the game now, eight of their 19. Emily Boyd wears 24. She is now in for CPA. Roman on top to Elefante. Back on top, there's Boyd. Left side, Roman three, short. Boy, the rebound picked away by Charpentier. Quick shot up and good. So far, that's been CPA's yeah. best offense. Get it going towards the rim and go retreat. McKenzie, Charpentier there, right all the way to the baseline. Missed the shot, but forced the foul. And CPA is, we'll see if it's on the gate. Nope, it'll be on 15. Mackenzie Charpentier, her first. That'll be the 17th foul. One and one coming here, as they say Wright was not in the act of shooting when she was fouled. Bobine's doing a great job of attacking whatever pressure CPA's trying to put up. And Wright, in particular, is attacking the rim at all opportunities. Pressure there, and a double dribble is the call on Macy Wright. That'll be turnover number five for Lyle LaRue's Lady Rebels. He talked about his team being nervous. They don't look like it. No, do they? they don't look nervous at all. And I think a lot of that starts with Wright. There's Boyd. Be sure Pontier back to Boyd on top. This CPA team has won 23 in a row coming into this state title game. In the lane, shot missed. By LeGate, and the rebound goes to O'Brien County. Just over three minutes to go here in the first half in this double-A state title game. And again, the order of games this week has been altered. Just a little tweak by the TSSAA. Double-A going first this year. Then triple-A, then we'll finish up with the Class A tonight at 6 o'clock. There's a travel call as Goodman didn't get the ball to the floor quite quick enough. And the turnover gives it back to the Lady Lions of CPA. They were here in the state tournament two years ago, lost in the quarterfinals. Those young ladies who were sophomores are now seniors now. Trying to bring that experience back to the table. Boyd in the corner to Elefante. Quick touch pass into Charpentier, but took an extra step trying to get around Goodman, and the turnover gives it back to O'Brien County as CPA turns it 
four the fifth time. And that is, now it's O'Brien County. They have the lead, but they've turned it over twice in a row. Right. Really quickly gets it into McEwen. Nice move, and her shot to it. That was a great move. Oh, yeah. Show and go type of play there. Again, O'Brien doing a great job of getting the ball to the rim, either by the dribble or by the pass. They'll dump it inside. Long three in the air. No good. Rebound is taken away by Goodman. Roman by far CPA's best three-point shooter. She's made 68 on the year. Goodman well on her way to a third double-double with six rebounds so far today to go along with eight first-half points. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. And CPA sitting back in their zone as they work it inside, trying to pack it in on Goodman. She hits the shot and again fouls her. She gets into the double figures in points now, and it'll be the second foul on Faith Legate. You've got to admire O'Brien's patience. You can see the after effects of that pass inside from Wiggins. And again, Goodman showing that left shoulder. She knows how to get to the free throw line. Couldn't convert the three-point play, and O'Brien fouls on the rebound. Allie McEwen will draw the foul. It will be her first and the third on the Lady Rebels as a team. Coach Becky Legate played in the state tournament. The uh, ball club from Greenbrier High School. Up on the Highland Rim. That was a jump shot good by Boyd. And CPA, quite frankly, needed a basket. Yes, they did. And did a good job of getting the ball there to the mid post. And there's a steal off the pressure. Boyd got the steal and got fouled on her way to the basket. You know, it's amazing how a basket energizes defense rather than vice versa you can see right after the score they get right into their press come up with an immediate steal and that's happened multiple times in this half foul is on wiggins her first team's fourth left elbow shot no good and goodman with the rebound for o'brien as they hold a nine point lead with just over a minute to go here in the first half skip pass nearly stolen away wiggins with a three rattles out Stolen away by Charpentier. Jennings had the ball. Now CPA has the ball. Elefante. Work back outside. Three point shot up and good. And it's Sammy Elefante for a second time today with a big three. She has come up big, and boy, that was much needed. The game has changed complexion very quickly. Here's Hicks with a three, could not answer, and Wiggins make that right with the rebound, had it stolen away, and now CPA with a chance to cut it to four or three. It could be a one possession game. Absolutely right. If they get a score here, you got to like where they've come from. Boyd and Elefante off the bench have energized the CPA squad. Elefante. Back to Roman. Her three wouldn't go, and that'll end the first half. Your score at halftime is O'Brien County 23, CPA 17, and the Lady Lions in the quarter on a 5-2 to two run. Now let's head it over to Jonathan Hutton, who's standing by with head coach Lyle LaRue. Yeah, thanks, Chip. And coach, other than the press, you got to be pretty good about where you stand at halftime. Your offense is getting into good sets once you get past half court. Yeah, we usually love people to press us. I don't know what's happening. I think we're taking off before we see what we have. We'll fix that at halftime. But, yeah, we're running good sets. I wish we'd been making more of our free throws, and we got to improve the defensive rebound and get – Quit giving them so many second opportunities. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Chip. It's 23-17 at the half. O'Brien Central from Troy, Tennessee, leading the CPA Lady Lions by six at halftime. Now a word from your local PBS station. Murphy Center in MTSU.
Syracuse campus enjoying the uh, Blue Cross basketball championships with TWSAA. And I'm Sonia Higginbotham with the WCTE station. And I'm Avery Owens at WCTE and we're so happy to be here today and representing the stations across the state of Tennessee as your local PBS station. That's right Avery, I tell you there has been a lot of exciting action going up and down this court today. These ladies have been keeping it going, I mean back and forth and the score has been really close. It really has been and they really have had a team effort in this game and with the participation of the crowds and the, the cheerleaders it really has the, the energy level here in the stadium is just huge. That's right and you know we would like for you to just keep in mind that your local PBS station is bringing this coverage to you as a partnership with TWSAA and Play On Sports. So if you would like to pledge in this membership drive to your local station, just call the number at the bottom of your screen. Avery? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, and you know. Man, this car is amazing. These seats feel so good. And the speakers are crazy good. No seat warmers too, man. 470 horsepower. Can't wait till we go to the club. Man, just imagine. We're going to get all the ladies. Come on, guys. This is a nice car, but let's get back to work. Hello, I'm Paul Grove. We are proud to be able to share with our community this year's Tennessee High School Basketball Championships. WTCI and PBS stations across the country are America's largest classroom, and we believe sports play a vital role in the learning process. WTCI's mission is to educate, engage, and inspire, and high school sports do just that, rallying our communities behind our youth as they strive to be more. So enjoy the games. Okay, and we're back here. You know, we just saw a premium uh, membership thank you reel go through, and we've got some great thank you gifts. If you would like to pledge your membership to your local PBS station, we have six stations across the Tennessee that work in partnership with one another to bring you this great coverage. We, we do. We have some great gifts, and we hope that you will um, take this opportunity now to pledge uh, your gift to, w to any of our public television stations across this Tennessee. And without your pledge, we can't be bringing you this great broadcast. That's right, Avery. You know, we just, at your local television station, your public television station across the state of Tennessee, it is up to us to bring you this great broadcasting that you're seeing today, along with your local programming that you see on a regular basis. So when you pledge your membership dollars, that is what we are able to provide for you with that money. So just go ahead and when you see that number come across the bottom of your screen, just feel free to call in to your local station. Yes, and make that call now. Now is a great opportunity to, to make that pledge. And, and you know, Sonia, PBS has so much to offer our communities as an educational tool. And it is known as the, the uh, what is it, the, the uh, number one trusted source. Number one trusted source for education. And it is known that more people, more students that watch PBS as preschool is known to have better reading and writing and social skills. That's right, Avery. And I know that a lot of our students here today have had some great um, opportunities to grow up watching our shows. So, you know, um, as they go up and down this court, just think of where they have been and the shows they've watched with PBS growing up, because I know uh, my child has watched PBS growing up. We are trusted, we are commercial free, mm -hmm. so a lot of parents do entrust their children to us and um, have us, you know, as their main source mm -hmm. of um, enjoyment and entertainment for their it children. Is, and we can't take that for granted, so please, right now, pick up the phone, make your pledge, support your local PBS station in your community. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Jeff Calkins, columnist for the Commercial Appeal. I'd like to congratulate all the teams that have made it to the Tennessee State Championships. It's funny, the dream of so many young kids is to make it to the NBA, but when you ask NBA players when they had the most fun playing basketball, they'll invariably tell you it was in high school. High school kids play for the joy of it, not the paychecks. High school kids really do care about the names on the fronts of their jerseys. High school kids listen to their coaches. High school kids have to go to class. And if high school kids don't maintain an appropriate grade point average, they take a seat in the bleachers with the rest of us. There are rewards for all this, of course, beyond the fleeting moments of glory. Studies have shown that student athletes tend to have lower dropout rates and fewer disciplinary problems than other students. They learn lessons that serve them forever. And that's why it's such a privilege for us at Tennessee Public Television to team up with the TSSAA to bring you every one of the championship games. They're the essence of what sports should still be. And to all the students, the parents, and their coaches, a hearty congratulations. Hello, I'm Monica Shumate, General Manager and CEO of WLJT. At WLJT, we're proud to serve West Tennessee with programming and outreach services that inspire, educate, and entertain. It only makes sense in our mission to serve the children of Tennessee for us to be a part of the TSSAA Basketball Championships. Whether you're a team from Jackson, Lexington, or Martin, or from Memphis, Nashville, or Knoxville, the Tennessee Public Television Stations are proud to be able to bring these games into your living room. As you're enjoying today's action, we hope you'll reflect on the great programs you've enjoyed on PBS, especially the PBS children's programs like Super Y, Sesame Street, and Word World that have helped to teach your children to read. Please call the number on your screen and support the local public television stations that have made this programming possible. Your financial support is your vote that programming, such as today's games, are important to our viewers. Thank you and good luck to all the teams. Twenty three seventeen at the half, O'Brien County leading CPA and Kyle, the first quarter numbers bear out exactly where the score is. I don't think there's any doubt, Chip. 20% field goal shooting for CPA. They started out 0 of 14 from the floor, 0 of 7 from the three-point line. The thing that has kept them in the game is the rebounds. You see 24 total, 14 of those were from the offensive end. O'Brien has been much more efficient on the offensive end. Kyle, they had seven field goals. They got six assists. Yes, they did. Six assists on seven baskets, and they've been able to handle CPA's pressure, plus get the ball inside to Brandy Goodman. She finishes the first half, 10 points, eight rebounds, and that's exactly the recipe for success. And Goodman has caused CPA to have some inside foul trouble. Yes, they have. They've got uh, Thompson with three, and they've got Legate with two. So CPA is going to have to find a way to keep Thompson from catching the ball, or keep Goodman from catching the ball on the front end rather than defend her after she catches the ball. All right, let's go over to Jonathan Hutton, who's standing by with Coach Becky Legay. Thank you very much, Chip. Coach, you shoot just 20% in the first half, down just six points. You got to feel pretty good about that. Actually, I do. That's probably the worst, well, it was the worst half we played in the tournament and for several ball games. So, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. We're getting twice as many shots at them. We just got to put the ball in the basket. And just settle down. Do you think they do settle that? Settle down. Yeah, we, we were really uptight. We haven't played that way this whole tournament. We just need to relax and play our game. All right, good luck in the second Thank half. Thank you. Chip, back to you. 16 minutes to go for somebody to take home that big gold basketball for Class AA. Who's it going to be? Stay tuned. You'll find out after this. I see history. I see numbers. I see music. I see spaceships. I see a butterfly. Each year, the School Advocates for Vision and Education in Memphis makes it possible for hundreds of school children to get the glasses they need, all for free. I see my future. So whatever they see, they see better. That's why Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee supports them. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. I see you. See how Blue Cross is impacting your community at bcbst.com forward slash impact. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you.
Second half underway here at Murphy Center on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University. Chip Walters and Kyle Turner with you. Blue Cross Basketball Championship. Class AA girls for the Tennessee State title. Bryan County leading by six points, and they have the ball to start the second half and immediately go to Goodman. They have the ball stolen away, and CPA tries to score first in the second half. They do as Mallory Charpentier scores. They've got to feel great about where they are from the way they started the game to be four points down. Now is a miracle. Goodman, post double, another steal. And they'll come the other way. Bryan County only had one turnover in the first quarter, but had seven in the second quarter, and CPA converts it again. Excellent pass by, by Charpentier. But Bryan County answers very quickly, and it's Goodman who now has a dozen. 25-21, four-point game. Working inside, Thompson. Inside-out pass to Charpentier. Now high post to Legate. They'll get it out to Charpentier. Now to her sister. Short corner to Thompson. The jump shot is good. Great job of getting the ball to the wing and back to the short corner for a wide open look from Thompson. CPA now within two, Kyle. That's the closest they have been in a long, long time. Yeah, the complexion of the game has changed dramatically. Outside, three-point shot missed there and the rebound chased down by Brooke Jennings. Bryan County gets it back. Baseline drive, shot blocked away by Thompson. Ball goes out of bounds but remains with O'Brien. One of the things that O'Brien did well in the first half, Chip, they were very patient offensively until they got the ball inside to Goodman. Been a little sporadic here early on, maybe some jitters. Closest CPA has been since the opening minutes of the first quarter. As Macy Wright is O'Brien County. It's kind of funny how the worm turns a little bit as uh, they've started to get a little more deliberate offensively. Absolutely. Inside to Goodman and a double inside again and it will be holding call on Mackenzie Charpentier. And on Charpentier, her second team's first foul of the half. First team 5.48 remaining. And it is a two-point game, much tighter than it was. Bryant did have a double-digit lead. But CPA came storming back in the final moments of the second quarter. They had been up by 11, but now it's down to two. Here's right on top. Looks around that zone, and they're not really attacking the zone. They're kind of settling for things right now. Showing some patience here, trying to move the zone a little bit, looking obviously for Goodman, who's at the high post at this stage. Wiggins from the outside. Her shot won't go, and the rebound chased down by Carpentier. Mallory throws it down the court to Legate, and in! One of the things that I really liked about Faith Legate yesterday was how she ran the floor. Macy Wright, the end of day. Macy Wright can't connect, and Thompson gets the rebound. We're tied, and CPA will shoot for the lead. Here's Roman. Back out to Charpentier. Drives inside. There's Legate. CPA misses on the point blanker. Rebound pulled away by Goodman. O'Brien comes the other way. Well, they couldn't ask for a better shot to take the lead. Baseline. Layup good. Excellent vision there by Wright. Allie McEwen. With a 13-2 CPA run to get where they are now. Rebels in the lead, but boy, another good look at the ball, and Goodman comes down with the rebound. CPA has missed two pretty good looks inside here in the last two possessions. No buying can their great look. 27-25. There's Hicks to Goodman, high post. Shoots a free throw, basically, and misses the rebound. And a foul on Goodman as Thompson runs it down. Beneath Tennessee's Cumberland Mountains lies the world's most magical musical adventure, 333 feet deep in the volcano room. Music from the heart of the American experience. Tune in for Bluegrass Underground on this PBS station. Goodman now with two fouls. First team foul 
as we're halfway through the third quarter and things have tightened up considerably. CPA looking to tire, take the lead this trip down the floor. Carpentier, right short corner, shot good by Thompson. She's two for two from that spot. We're right back where we started from. 27 all, 340 to go in the third quarter. Here's another steal. Charpentier, Mallory driving, Hicks fouls her, shot wouldn't go, but Charpentier will go to the line, and Hicks picks up her second foul. Well, you've seen CPA's pressure really assert itself. It's giving them multiple transition opportunities that they've done a great job taking advantage of. CPA has really gotten up and down the floor, in particular in the second quarter, and here early in the third as Charpentier connects to give CPA their first lead of the game. Yeah, after the first quarter, everything is pretty much leveled out, and now you've seen CPA assert itself defensively and take the lead. Charpentier hits both free throws. It's now 29-27. Lady Lions. Right to Wiggins, to Hicks. Around the horn it goes. Now they feed the post. Inside out comes back to Wiggins. Ball nearly knocked away again. And Legate, I think, will get the foul to make that Mallory Charpentier. Trying to get the steal, but got there just a half second too late. That's exactly right. Great anticipation by Mallory there. Almost had a clean steal. Her third personal foul. And that will be the second team foul of the half. So Ryan has it. Tia for three and rip it. Allie McEwen, her second three of the game. She's got ten now. Very quietly, and O'Brien retakes the lead. Just in time for McKenzie Charpentier to repay the favor. They transition offense again. Wide open three. Goodman has her shot blocked, and Legate gets the foul. And on Faith Legate, that will be her third. Also the team's third foul, and Goodman will go to the free throw line. So far she is six out of nine there today, and uh, that is a real asset for their ball club. Miss there, aimed it a little bit. Well, you have both Thompson and Legate with three fouls. Yesterday, Legate also had three fouls, and Thompson had a fantastic second half in her absence. Bryant has been at the line. This will be for the 14th shot of the day as Goodman misses both. Rebound picked up by Wright. She hits the shot and will go to the line for a three-point play. Mackenzie Charpentier had the rebound and lost it. And there was Wright, as usual, right on the spot, right on time. Third foul now on Mackenzie Charpentier. Macy Wright with five points. Looks for number six. Missed it there, and Thompson pulls down the rebound. So the challenge now for Coach Becky Legate is personnel. How are you gonna, when are you gonna pull the trigger on getting both your post players back in there? Right now they have Legate on the bench, Thompson inside. Now they're going to bring Elefante on the floor, who gave them a tremendous lift in the first half, so no loss there. Yeah, Elefante didn't start, but has six first-half points on two threes. One shot is missed. Rebound by Thompson and stuck in. Picking up right where she left off yesterday. Great job on the offensive boards. Nice put back. Hicks all the way down. Gets the layup from Allie McEwen. And in transition, O'Brien found again where they had been successful earlier. Well, we're tied again at 34. Getting the ball to the middle of the floor and attacking that 2-2-1. That's one of the areas that you don't want it to go. Thompson misses and the rebound by Goodman and she's fouled. And we'll check the CPA foul. I think it's on Emily Boyd. Just a guess. <laughs> Tie game at 34. It is, however, the fifth team foul on CPA. So into front court comes Macy Wright. 
Foul was on 24. Emily Boyd, her first. And inside goes right. The foul call. The, the CPA hopes it's not on Thompson. It's going to be on 22. Valerie Carpentier, which that's going to be her fourth. That's her fourth, and they are deep in foul trouble. It'll be foul number six on the team. Right now, they have Mackenzie Charpentier, Legate, and Thompson all with three, and Mallory Charpentier with four. Shot missed, and Thompson with a rebound. They get it out to Emily Boyd. All the way in, drives in, misses. Thompson with the rebound, but now they're going to call a late foul on O'Brien County. And it will be Boyd who goes to the line. So here, take another look at it. There was contact. A lot. Boyd will shoot two. Six. Who was the foul on for? Fine, not sure. It was, however, their third team foul. So Boyd at the line gives CPA the lead as she hits one out of two. That foul was on McEwen. It is her second day. 35-34 CPA. Just over a minute to go here in the third quarter. They feed Goodman down low. Work it back out to Jennings. Now again, it ends up in Goodman's hands. Her shot won't go. And the rebound pulled away by Elefante. Elefante gets it out to Wharton. Avery Wharton, who is in for the first time today, runs the point. Boyd, nice move to the basket. And the finish with the left hand. Well, I like Boyd's game. She's single-minded. When she gets the ball, let's go to the right. 37-34, CPA with their biggest lead of three points. And a steal. It's Boyd. And there's going to be a foul in backcourt call. As Boyd made the steal. Foul will be on Macy Wright, her first. And on the team, their fourth. Boyd, another one of the substitute players for CPA that's playing great for them today, giving them a tremendous lift. So CPA has risen from the ashes since the end of the first quarter and has taken a three-point lead and barring a turnover they'll have the lead going to the fourth period Ryan applies the pressure there's Boyd ten seconds to go Boyd fires a desperation three which she really didn't need to lost track of the clock but here comes O'Brien Mason well that's one way to score. Even on Saturday, 37-37. It's our fifth tie. And here we go, just inside the midcourt line. A long one by Macy Wright takes us all time to the fourth quarter. Wright wasn't sure how much time she had, but she made due time with it. Back to the fourth quarter after this. People in East Tennessee love history because it's all around them. It's part of their own personal history, and history gets exciting when it's personal. People in East Tennessee are surrounded by their history. They live with it every day. They talk about it in their families. It's part of their daily life. And East Tennesseans connect to history and to the land in a very special way. I'm Cheryl Henderson, director of the East Tennessee Historical Society, and the Tennessee Channel is my source for the past, the present, and the future. Man, this car is amazing. These seats feel so good. And the speakers are crazy good. No seat warmers too, man. 470 horsepower. Can't wait till we go to the club. Man, just imagine. We're going to get all the ladies. Come on, guys. This is a nice car, but let's get back to work. Kimberly Williams-Paisley on NPT Reports, 
children's health crisis? Well, you can't usually go this in depth unless you do a series like NPT is doing. Every episode in the series has just been really well done, very informative. I'm just so glad that the information is being presented and put out there for the public and that we can start talking about these issues and raise some more awareness and hopefully start to turn the statistics around. It's a huge undertaking, but it's an important one. They have to go out, they have to get the statistics, get the information, interview people on all of these ranges of topics. This project has a great value to people in Middle Tennessee. I'm grateful to NPT for doing this. I'm, I'm just thankful that they've seen this as something worth doing. They've committed to making a difference, and I, and I believe that I'm part of something that will make a difference, and that makes me feel really good. Catherine Smith is with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, and she joins us now. Catherine, Blue Cross Blue Shield once again involved with the TSSAA. Yes, it's been a great partnership. Ever since 2000, we've partnered with TSSAA, and um, of course, you know, we're also part of the Blue Cross Bowl and Blue Cross Spring Fling, so this is our second year out at Blue Cross Basketball Championships, and it's just been a great atmosphere and a lot of fun for us. And just like football, the fan face-off is back. Yes, we do have the fan face-off, and it's all Facebook-bound this time around. There's no texting contest, but we're, of course, still trying to get the school spirit involvement so you just go to our Facebook page and enter in what school you're supporting and that school could win a thousand dollars by the end of Saturday and potentially yourself you could be entered to win the hundred dollar gift card so it's a win-win. How can they find the Facebook page again? So it's facebook.com slash BCBST champions. Great stuff thank you. Thank you. Guys back to you. Down to eight minutes to go and one of these two teams is going to go home with a state title neither has ever won it before cpa trying to make history kyle in the history of girls basketball in the state only two private schools have ever won a division one championship ezel harding did it back in 2002 david lipscomb did it in two in 1986 cpa trying to do it in 2012. sammy elefante misses the three and on the run Goes up Bayan County. They work it into Goodman. Oh, give it go. Back door and right. Couldn't be wrong. Nice little Laker cut there. Feed the post and then run that baseline cut for a give and go. Easy basket. Right probably has the adrenaline flowing after hitting that half court shot. Made a perfect move to the basket there. And it's 39 37 CPA. Down the lane, they find Ward open, but Thompson with the offensive stick back. Well, Ward started the entire play. Boyd took a tougher shot than she had to, but Thompson right there on time. Give and go again. It's right again. Well, you got to like the way that Wright goes in there. We've used the word fearless. That's the way she attacks the basket. Elefante, a three. It's good again. She's got three of them. She has been monstrous off the bench on both the offensive and defensive end. CPA takes the lead. It's our fifth lead change of the day. 42-41. Got a little prize fight going now, Chip. Well, we do. For the AA state championship. There's Wiggins, right side, over to right. Right at Wiggins, a little two-man game against the 2-3 zone. In the corner, they'll work it. And it's Jennings who shot would not fall. And CPA away with the rebound and a foul on Macy Wright. Check in with Jonathan Hutton and see what's happening over on the O'Brien bench. Jonathan? Chip, during that last uh, break between quarters, Coach LaRue came in laughing to his group saying, hey, the pressure is not in our quarter. We're tied at 37 going into the fourth for the state title. Would we have taken that? Absolutely. All the girls said, let's go have fun. Let's go win a state title. And sometimes when you put things in perspective, Kyle, like coaches a lot of times try to do, you can make a bad situation feel not so bad. Yeah, you got to like his presence there of mind just to keep it to work. You know, it's about the game of basketball. Don't worry about the fact you're playing for a state championship. Do what you need to do on the floor between the lines. We can lift the goal ball later. CPA turns it over and O'Brien County gets it back. They trail by one. 42-41 in this half. One turnover for CPA. Came right there. 
Here's Goodman in the lane, turning and shooting. Missing. Rebound pulled away by CPA. They'll work it outside. Charpentier gets to the middle of the floor. Over in the corner, Elefante again. She's got four threes. Well, I can't say enough about that young lady. She has really brought her A game today. Right. Pushes it up the floor, misses, and Elefante with the rebound. Coming out of backcourt is Charpentier. 5.25 remaining. Largest lead of the day so far for CPA. Four points. O'Brien went by 11 in the first half. There's a bad pass. Stolen away by Macy Wright. She'll work against Legate. Then in foul called on Legate, which will be her fourth. The game was in good position, and when she came down with her hands, it became an easy call. You'll see again as Wright goes to the bucket. And you saw that left arm yep. come down. Right where she needed to be, and again, anytime you come down like that, it's an easy call. Bryant goes into the bonus at the 5.07 mark of the fourth quarter, down four. Wright hits the freebie. She has 13 today, which leads all scores. O'Brien has three double-figure scores. Both teams pretty even. Chip, look at that stat. Bench points 13-0 in favor of CPA. They've had a huge influence on this game. Sandy Elefante has 12 of those. Second free throw missed. CPA pulls it away. They lead by three with five minutes to go. Pontier's jumper off the mark and rebounded by the Lady Rebels. CPA gets the rebound back and Wright will foul her inadvertently, I might add. That will be her third foul and will be the sixth team foul on the Rebels. And right now, you would think that CPA, if they can keep the lead will start to need to use a little clock. Absolutely, the complexion has changed. They have to go from being the hunter to being the hunted at this point in the game. Inside, Thompson misses, and the rebound will be, there's gonna be a foul call inside. You can purchase a DVD copy of any of the Division I or Division II Blue Cross Championships. Log on to TSSAAnetwork.com and look for the green buy now button. The foul is on Mackenzie Charpentier. That will be her fourth. And just a little more foul trouble for Coach Becky Legate. Well, at this point in time, with 4.44 to go, you probably are not going to sit any of those with four fouls. Wright hits the first free throw. Macy Wright now with 14 points. They'll bring Wharton back in. And Mackenzie goes to the bench. Warner on the bench for a minute or two and then bring her back to the stretch run. Wright misses the second free throw. Thompson had some contact on the rebound, but gets it out to Mallory Charpentier. The Charpentier sisters, a big part of what CPA does from the guard spots. 22 is Mallory. There's Gordon inside to Legate, turns and fires and scores. Nice inside play there. Got the ball to Legate, who did a great job of posting up, just turns and scores. Coach's daughter making Mama proud. Timeout called for across the way by O'Brien County, and he wants a full timeout. 47 43. CPA with a four point lead right now. And how do these two teams look to attack this final 415? Well, obviously, you want to go to your money player, and that's going to be Brandy Goodman. She's brought them to this point, and that's the one that's going to take it home. If you're CPA, obviously, you're trying to eliminate that possibility. But if you're O'Brien, you also want to continue to attack. CPA is in such great foul trouble right now that if they pick up any perimeter fouls, those players are going to the bench, you're getting the clock stopped, and you're getting a chance to go to the free throw line where you have to capitalize. We're getting a great look inside the two team huddles. We saw hey, Coach Lyle LaRue. Now Becky Legate. Let's listen in to Becky and Kevin Legate.
good advice from Kevin Legate. Who spent many years <laughs> right off of Rick Bird's seat there at Belmont. Kevin, great coach in his own right, so it's a great resource to have on your sidelines. Hey, he says no more fouls, 94 feet. <laughs> Well, that's that's sort of a coach's creed. It's you know I don't think there's many games that are going to be lost at the 94 foot mark. Don't foul people there. Here's the inbound to Goodman. She feeds the post and hits a layup and a big assist from the big girl inside. Yeah, she's more than just a scorer, Chip. She catches the ball there, faces up, nice passer. Back within two, and Lyle Larue had to feel good because he got a pretty easy bucket coming out of the timeout. Elefante. Out to Charpentier. 3.50 to go. Charpentier in the lane, lost it, got rid of it to the gate, now it's stolen away. Got a little careless with the basketball, and Wiggins came up with it. That is turnover number eight in the game. Trying to force the action that's not really required at that point. Good screen there by Wiggins. They're working around to Hicks. Trying to tire, take the lead. Hicks shot back by Thompson. And she got the block without foul. Now they've got a three-on-one. Elefante stops, she'll fire it and score. Not exactly the shot you want in a three-on-one, but I guess when it goes down, it all worked out great. That's her first shot inside the three-point line today. She has 14 in the game, off the bench. And the four-point lead ties for the largest of the day so far. A miss by Goodman. And CPA with the rebound. We talked about him, but he was so dominant in the first half with 10 points. Only a deuce here in the second half. Tell you what, if you're loose with the basketball at all, this right is coming after. Legate misses, but the rebound by Thompson fired it straight up. Legate got the ball. They'll need to reset, trying to build on what is now a four-point lead with two and a half minutes to go. Out of the corner, the shot missed, and the rebound here will be knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Lauren Thompson, who landed right on her hip. Yep, she's going to have to leave the game because they stopped the game for her situation. The official is motioning her off the floor. And timeout being called and it will be by Becky Legate of CPA and not sure whether she will be it because by calling the timeout she may be able to keep her in the game but we'll see if that is indeed the case let's check in listen in to coach Lyle LaRue of O'Brien Central You saw right there that O'Brien County, they're ready to start fouling, Kyle. And he's gotten the players to notice who it is they need to foul any time that they miss. And he called for Mallory Charpentier to be fouled as soon as she touches the basketball. Macy Wright moves it into front court. It's a big, big possession for O'Brien County Central. Right to the right side, drives in, goes into Thompson, and the ball knocked away off of Thompson. And every time Thompson has something that uh, where there's contact, there has to be uh, some breath held on the CPA bench. Blue Cross Basketball Championships moving the game brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee promoting healthy and active lifestyle among Tennessee's young people. And that was a block earlier underneath by Thompson was the move of the game and then the basket on the other end by CPA was our Blue Cross Blue Shield move of the game. Chip on the under out of bounds play. You get to see Macy Wright make a great cut against the CPA zone. They got the ball to her. Macy does what she does best, attack the rim. She picks up the fifth foul on Faith Legate. Yeah, while we were waiting, Legate fouls out. And Wright goes to the line. She hits the first free throw. She has 15, 2.07 to go. Mark that down as 
Faith Legate fouls out at that point. Thompson's still in the game, but she's playing with three fouls right now. So they have milked it to the two-minute mark and have only lost one player to this point. CPA by three with the ball. Charpentier with it, and they do foul her as Wiggins gets the ball. You heard Coach Lyle LaRue in the huddle said when 22 gets it, foul her immediately. She comes in having shot 64% on the year. Her sister, McKenzie, has shot 60% from the free throw line on the year. So you basically want to focus on the two Charpentier sisters in terms of fouling and getting the clock stopped. Mallory Charpentier, one and one, hits the front end. And she says, so you want to foul me? Exactly. <laughs> Charpentier now with seven points. Three throws up and good. She has eight. And it's 51-46, the largest lead of the game. For CPA comes in the final two minutes. And the pressure on now for O'Brien County. Top, Brooke Jennings into the corner, right three, misses. Rebound, chase down, and it's Avery Horton, or make that mirror with Roman, who comes up with it. Out to Charpentier, out to Roman in the front court. And pressure there, and a foul on Macy Wright. That'll be her fourth. Foul number eight on a Bayan County. I know it's getting late, but Wright's one of those players that you would like to try to keep on the floor, even though you're fouling almost automatically. You hope that someone else fouls and keeps her on the floor. We're going to get a timeout here by O'Brien. 30-second timeout coming up for O'Brien County. And now you start having to look at desperate measures if CPA can continue to hit their free throws. Yes, you do. You've got three timeouts left if you're O'Brien. We're listening to Becky in the lock in the uh, huddle there. Get to your spot. It's going to be in the middle. Now, it's going to be in the middle. Hey, you square up and see. Yeah. Okay? Don't impulse, pass. Hey, hey, we don't have to score. Hey. We've got time. Don't waste it. Oh, I have three timeouts. I like it. You and I talk a lot about when we do the Middle Tennessee games about time score, knowing the exact situation that's going on. The Legates right there did a great job of reminding their players exactly what the game situation is. Time and score. They do have timeouts left, but Kevin said one thing. Hey, don't waste them, but we have them. That's exactly right, and I thought that Becky gave them a great piece of advice. We don't have to score, which means you don't want to take poor shots. Well, great offensive rebound by Charpentier on the missed free throw. She just took it away from Allie McEwen, and O'Brien with another foul. Chip and watching the game yesterday and obviously watching the game today, I'd like to have seen those one-on-one -on -one battles from those sisters of the backyard over the years. I bet they were classic. Boy, right there, just a perfect bounce, and Charpentier got it away, and Hicks drew the foul, which is her third. Now, Mackenzie Charpentier at the line. The iron was kind. Well, if you think missed free throw box outs aren't important, Clarksville gave up two yesterday to allow Science Hill to advance to the AAA state finals. We're looking at a, a similar scenario here. This free throw could make it a three possession game, and it does. Seven points for Mackenzie Charpentier, and it's 53-46. Hicks in the lane, ball stolen away, CPA gains possession. Thompson in backcourt gets fouled, and she'll go to the line now. As Allie McEwen forces the action, that will be her second foul. And with 1.07 remaining, it will be double bonus time for CPA. And another timeout for Lyle LaRue and O'Brien Central. CPA did a great job there of collapsing their zone on the drive by Paige Hicks, and she got into no man's land, basically. Tried to throw a pass out that was stolen, and again, it put CPA at a free throw line with an opportunity to extend this lead. 
You can't have empty possessions, obviously, if you're Obine at this point. They're down to two timeouts left with 1.07 to go. They're down three possessions, 53-46, as that seventh point, Kyle, is the difference between six and seven is a whole lot more than one. You better believe it. You better believe it. And a chance here to go up by nine, which would be a three-possession game. Well, a look there coming up in our next game will be the AAA title game. Mike Keith and Ron Bargatze will have the action for you. The unbeaten Science Hill Lady Toppers take on the Riverdale Lady Warriors. And Riverdale in their third straight class AAA title game. But they're going to get a test from a very solid Science Hill team who unfortunately for them suffered a key injury yesterday. But what a courageous effort on their part when they lost their best player to stay with the game plan and execute and be in that championship game. Thompson hits two free throws and CPA leads by nine as we hit the one minute mark in this double A state championship game. Wright scores and gets fouled. Holy cow. Not what you want to do and it's going to be on Thompson which will be her fourth and right now, with 17 points, there is no give up in her. No, she's going to drive the basketball. Nice little spin move there. Got into Thompson. Somehow got the ball to go down. And if you're CPA, you do not want that clock stop. And it sends. O'Brien in the double bonus. Rebound on the missed free throw is taken by Charpentier. And we'll check who they choose to give the foul to. And it will be on 13, Allie McEwen, her fourth. Well, you really have to admire CPA's effort on the boards, both the offensive and the defensive end. That really has provided them the opportunity to stay in the game early and finish the game late. Actually, only the third foul on McEwen, but it will send McKenzie Sharp to the free throw line. It was two out of four there today. For a tick under a minute to go in this title game. The free throw there, no good. Paige Hicks will check back in for O'Brien. And to quote Becky Legate a moment ago, they don't need to score. They need the clock running right now. And fouling is what gets that clock stopped. Sometimes it's easier and better to give up a basket and allow that clock to run than to foul. Free throw missed. And on the baseline, out of bounds off of CPA, and it will be O'Brien County's ball once again. 57 seconds to go. Wright picks it up, and they've got some work to do. Wright quickly into Goodman. She's got to go to the basket. Missed the shot. Rebound pulled away by Mallory Charpentier. And foul there, or ball knocked out of bounds. 46 seconds to go. No, there was a foul okay. call. And it's going to be on Goodman. That will be her third. And it'll be two free throws on the other end. Seven point lead. But time running out for that man, Lyle LaRue. He'll take another 30 second timeout. You got to start thinking three sometime. Yes, you do. They got the ball inside to Goodman on the previous play. I was surprised that they didn't play inside out on that particular play. Take the wide open three if it's there. If the closeout is poor, shot fake it and drive it and get to the rim. You just don't have that much time. You don't have that many possessions left. 55-48, CPA solidly in the driver's seat and Kyle to think we're at this point with just under a minute to go after CPA started this game 0 for 14 from the field and 3 of 23 overall to start the first quarter incredible Mallory Charpentier scores the free throw she has nine and with this one looks to become the third double figure score of the day for the Lions misses it Goodman with the rebound and here come the Rebels in a big, big hurry. Foul called on CPA. It'll be a two-shot foul. As we check, it's on 24, Emily Boyd. 
That'll be her second. I'd like to take Macy Wright's motor and put it in some running backs. I'm telling you. She knows how to find the end zone. She takes it downhill, doesn't she? Yes, she does. <laughs> Macy Wright leads all scores today with 17. This is the free throw there, and Thompson with the rebound. 39 seconds to go, and Hicks with her fourth foul will put CPA back on the line again with 38.2 seconds to go. But CPA getting closer and closer to picking up their first girls' basketball state championship. And in double A, which is so strong across the state, when you think about those great teams off the Cumberland Plateau, some of those teams up in East Tennessee, it has been a private school from Nashville and a very, very good team out of West Tennessee who have played for the title today. And came into this tournament unranked. Yes. O'Brien ranked third. CPA was unranked but had won 23 in a row. And we'll check the foul underneath, and that's got to be having Becky Legate want to pull out her very long hair across the way <laughs> with her team continuing to foul. Quit fouling. And Mackenzie Carpentier fouls out of the game. You want to be competitive, but sometimes you're better off here this time let them take the shot. Again, I mean, you're going to make them finish, and if they want to take their time out, it would be their last time out. Charpentier leaves with seven points and eight rebounds today. And they've done a masterful job on the boards, again, on the offensive and defensive end, and that's basically what's been a highlight for their game today. Goodman at the line, and... Hits the second free throw. Goodman has 13. And I tell you, really, you can't say enough about the defensive job against Goodman in the second half that has really propelled CPA to where they are right now. Yeah, they struggled, obviously, containing her at all in the first half. And the second half have done a much better job. Didn't allow her to get early position. They worked better away from the ball defensively so that when she caught it, she wasn't in an advantageous position to score. Macy Wright fouls out and across the way gets a big hug from her coach Lyle LaRue and that is you talk about a competitor and a warrior right there yes as Wright fouls out well that's the tough part of being involved in a game like this you know how much it means to young ladies like that and as much as you want to cheer on the winner, you have to feel equally as sorrowful for the loser. They have gotten here to this title game, and it's a 10-point lead with 28 seconds to go. Wiggins gets it, get it to Goodman inside. She wheels in, hits the shot, and another foul on CPA, and it's Elefante who fouls her. The basket by Goodman. You keep looking at the CPA bench and both coaches Legate are just holding their hands up saying, quit fouling. And Goodman will try to convert the three-point play, but only 21 seconds remain. Goodman now with 16, and it's 59-52. Thompson gets it back. They'll work it across from Charpentier to Thompson. They foul her with 12 and a half seconds to go. And for Goodman, that will be foul number four. CPA did a great job there of playing keep away, moving the basketball so that O'Bine could not foul them quickly. Ultimately, had to get the foul there on Thompson. Lauren Thompson has 14 in the game, now 15. And all but four have come here in the second half. The 16th point gives CPA a nine-point lead, now a steal. Elefante just knocked down by McEwen. Had to get the foul with 10 seconds to go. A little frustration coming through there. 
That will be her fourth. And Sammy Elefante goes to the line. And you know, what do you say about this kid? I tell you the truth, she's been a whirlwind off the bench. Has four threes off the bench today. Missed the free throw there, but she was really what got them going offensively. She absolutely was. Chip made a couple of threes early on, played some great defense, and, and uh, you know, has been the catalyst basically for their success. Under 10 seconds to go. Goodman will walk it up the floor herself and take a three. Missed it, and with 3.3 seconds to go, CPA will bring it in. O'Brien will not foul. The clock will run out. And Christ Presbyterian Academy of Nashville are your double-A state champions. How about that? Who would have thought after that start, three of 23 from the floor, they missed their first 14 shots from the field, and they stormed all the way back to win the goal ball. There's a happy couple, Kevin and Becky Legate. Becky, the head coach, Kevin, the assistant and their daughter Faith was in that pile out there somewhere. I tell you what, you know how close to the family they are. I don't think it could get much better than that. Price Presbyterian becomes only the third private school to win a Division I state championship in girls basketball. As they do it here today, 61 to 52. CPA today, Kyle, they closed it out strong at the line. Their last 11 points came at the free throw line. Well, and that's where you have to make business is at the free throw line. They knew they were going to get fouled. You have to go up there and step up and knock them down. Jonathan Hutton standing by with a very happy Becky Legay. That's exactly right, Chip. A very happy coach here. Can you put into words what it means to win the state title? No, I can't. I <laughs> Unbelievable, unbelievable. Just so proud of my team, just so proud. I don't even know what to say right now. What was the reason for getting the offense going in the second half? You know, obviously you said we were shooting poorly, but we were getting twice as many shots and I just told them to relax and calm down and just shoot the way they knew how. We made some adjustments on how to attack the zone, got some extra offensive rebounds and they just put the ball in the basket and did a great job. How extra special is it to have your daughter and your husband on the bench with you? It's so awesome. Such an awesome, awesome thing. And just a testament to these girls. They are amazing. Amazing group. Very deserving. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Chip. 61-52 CPA wins. Our post-tournament awards will come up after this as you watch the TSSAA Network. I see history. I see numbers. I see music. I see spaceships. I see a butterfly. Each year, the School Advocates for Vision and Education in Memphis makes it possible for hundreds of school children to get the glasses they need, all for free. I see my future. So whatever they see, they see better. That's why Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee supports them. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. I see you. See how Blue Cross is impacting your community at bcbst.com forward slash impact. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. Tennessee. Our first finalist, Rachel Bell from Creekwood High School. Rachel, a 5'9", sophomore guard, two-year starter for the Red Hawks, who averages 17 points, 4.2 rebounds, 2.7 assists, and three and a half steals per game. She shoots 48% from the field, 35% from three-point range, and 70% from the free throw line. She was named to the all-district team in 2011 and is a two-time all-district tournament team selection. Rachel was named district MVP this season. Her head coach, Tom Mullenix. How about a big hand, Rachel Bell, Creekwood High School, our first finalist today. 
Elizabeth Massengill, McMinn Central High School. Elizabeth, the 5'11 junior forward, three years started for the Chargers, who averages 24.3 points a game, 11 and a half rebounds, 1.7 assists, and 3.2 steals per game. Shooting 51% from the field, 34% from three-point land, and 67% from the free throw line. She's been selected to the all district, all region, and all state tournament teams on multiple occasions and was named the MVP of the 2011 Class AA state tournament. Elizabeth was named the regular season and district tournament MVP this year. She was an all state selection last year as a sophomore. Her head coach here today, Johnny Morgan. How about a big hand, Elizabeth Massengill, McMinn Central High School. And our third finalist, Abby Sism from Cannon County High School. Abby is a 5'8 sophomore point guard, two-year starter for the Lions, who averages nearly 20 points a game, 2.6 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and 2.1 steals per game. She shoots 44% from the field, 35% from three-point range, 74% from the free throw line. Abby was named to the all-tournament team at last year's Class AA State Tournament. That same year, she was named the District 8 AA Freshman of the Year as well. Abby was the first team all-district selection this year. Her head coach, Michael Dodgen. How about a big hand? Abby Sism from Cannon County High School, our third finalist today. And now, your 2012 Class AA Miss Basketball winner, Elizabeth Massengill, McMinn Central High School. Congratulations. All right, how about another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Massengill, your 2012 AA Miss Basketball. And now on behalf of the TWSAA, we'd like to first recognize our competitors. Before we distribute our team trophies, we'd like to take a moment to thank some people who have helped make this a successful tournament. Please help us recognize Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce Middle Tennessee State University and staff for their help in hosting the tournament and making it an outstanding event. We'd also like to thank Action Picks TN, the official photographer of the TSSAA. You can purchase pictures from the state tournament at actionpickstn.com. The TSSAA would also like to thank Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, the Governor's Highway Safety Office, Tennessee Dairy Farmers, Rollins Baptist Sports Medicine, Huff and Puff, Puff Trucking, Action Picks TN for their support of the 2012 championship. Our first award goes to the cheerleading squad that has demonstrated outstanding sportsmanship during our tournament this week. The Spirit Award goes to Christ Presbyterian Academy, the cheerleaders from CPA. Great job, Lady Lion cheerleaders. And now the presentation of the runner-up coach's plaque belongs to Lyle LaRue, the head coach for O'Brien County Central. Coach Lyle LaRue and the presentation of the runner-up team, O'Brien County Central, the Lady Rebels. Tremendous season this year, finishing 35-3, and three, coming up just a little short here today. A tremendous season in 2012 for the Lady Rebels.
Out about one more big final hand, ladies and gentlemen. The Lady Rebels putting on a great job all week long, coming up a little short here in our championship game. And now the presentation of the champion coach's plaque, and it belongs to head coach Becky Legate from CPA. And now the presentation of the champion team, a gold ball, and it belongs to CPA, the Lady Lions 2012 State Champions. The all-tournament team contains a lot of great players, but Lauren Thompson today named the MVP of the state tournament. And boy, did she put a capper on it today. 18 points, 19 rebounds. Eight on the offensive end, and you've got to give a lot of credit also to Sammy Elefante coming off the bench. 14 points on the strength of four or five from the three-point line. CPA wins it 61-52. They outscore O'Brien County Central by 20 down the stretch to win it today for their first ever girls basketball championship. Championship. Stay tuned for the Class AAA title game. Mike Keith and Ron Bargatze will have all the action coming up. And for Kyle Turnham, this is Chip Walters saying thanks for being with us. Stay tuned now for a word from your PBS station as CPA wins the AA State Championship 61-52. You're watching the TSSAA Network. And welcome back. This